Okay, I think we're live. If anybody is here and ready, just let me know. I'm running a few minutes behind. I've had one heck of a day. Hey, Catherine. Hey, Anita. From Ottawa? Cool. Great, great. Hi, Sharon. We're going to give it a few minutes to let everybody get in. Um, I apologize. I was running a few minutes late today. Um, so it's just been one of those days. Hi, Robin. Hi, Joan. Great. I'm glad I've got some new new people here. Hi, Bonnie. This is Chat Around the Mat, guys. Let me transition over so you guys can see me. I'm a little disheveled. Um, I've been running around like a chicken with my head cut off here the last couple of hours. So I just finished up the explosion box, the pretty version, and I dropped my ink pad on it. Hi, Claudia. Hi, Nikki. Hi, Peggy. Make sure you guys pay attention because on Friday we play uh, Winner Winner Chicken Dinner. And it's a little game that we play. I ask a question, do a countdown, and I give away a prize every Friday. So make sure you pay attention because it will be something either about design space or something that we discussed in tonight's Chat Around the Mat. Hi, Jamie. Hi, Sue. Hi, Neela. I'm glad all of you guys could join me today. That's right, Anita. It won't. It charges the following month. It charges on the first of the month. And that's fine. Um, Anita, I have been running behind, so I have not checked Patreon in the last couple of hours. I will go in and give you access to the files as soon as uh, live is over tonight, if you can bear with me. Hi, Alice. And if it looks like I'm looking over in the other direction, I am, because I have you guys over on, de on the design space screen uh, with chat, and I'm reading it. So, All right, we'll go ahead and get started a little bit. Like I said, I had finished up the explosion box and was doing a last-minute little thing and dropped my ink pad on it. So I have a smudge on mine, so I'm going to have to remake mine, but that's okay. Um, everybody's been waiting for an explosion box and the base of this is what we're going to put together tonight and then we're going to go over some of the things that are in this explosion box and keep in mind if you're not a patron you will not have all of the elements of this box but you will have a good portion of them um, but you can select anything you want you do not have to put everything that I put into this box into it you can make your own decisions and put them wherever you want to in the box, but I'm going to show you what the elements do, and um, Friday we are going to put all of the elements together. So that's going to give you guys two days to pick out your papers and uh, what you want to put in your box, and we'll put them together on Friday. But we're going to put the base and the top together tonight. I'm just seeing if anybody else is joining. Hi, Peggy. I think I missed you up there. Hi, Nikki. I think I missed you too. Joan. Not Joan. Yeah, that was Joan M. And then I have Joanne. Hi, Joanne. Y'all are a little far away from me because I'm sitting in front of this computer and then I'll move over here in just a moment. Okay. The explosion box, and we're also going to cover embossing. And if you guys have any design space questions or project questions, please uh, just ask them. If we don't see it, put it in caps, and that way um, myself or one of the moderators will answer the questions for you. And if you don't understand, we can show you in design space on the screen. Anita, I use design space. 90% of the time. 
I um, use access images. Um, I try to use free images when I can, but a lot of times uh, some of the better elements are access images. And that's why I say access is totally worth the uh, standard or the premium. I prefer the premium because I have to, I pay once a year and I'm done. And I get and I know I'm going to get that 10% every time I shop at Cricut.com. So access is well worth it, especially when you're working and doing these kind of files because all the good elements are in there. Okay. And especially if you're learning, you really do need access if you're learning design space because that's going to enable you to concentrate on the function of design space rather than how do I upload, where do I get this image, where do I go for this, how do I do that. It's a lot easier just to click on images and search the library, pick something that you like because trust me, if it's not there, it's a rarity. Something's going to be there that you can use. and it's going to save you a lot of time and a lot of frustration. Once you've learned, if you want to drop access, I don't recommend it, but if you want to, you can, and then start uploading your own images and learning that portion of it. But I still find, I know how to do all of that, and I still find 90% of my images and everything I do in Design Space. Okay, I hope that clears that up for you guys. Guys, there is a huge sale going on that flash sale at Cricut. So your Easy Press is on sale. There's new product. There's pattern iron on. In case you guys didn't know, nine sets of pattern iron on. You get three different patterns in each set. So go and get that. Um, there's also the Sport Flex. That is new. If you're doing nylon or workout gear, or even if you're a woman and you need stretchy T-shirts and stuff. That Sport Flex is going to be your best friend. So make sure you check that out as well. Um, the totes are on sale. Paper, cardstock up to 60% off. Stock up. Um, this, I mean, the sale is better than Christmas. So that being said, let's switch over to, let's go over to the project camera. And take a look at some stuff there. Here is my brown mock-up that the patrons got to see because I posted it in the Facebook group. I accidentally threw away my lid, guys, so I had clothespins holding this together. But here is my mock-up box. Um, it is almost a 12 by 12 when it's opened up. There are several elements, and they're hard to see with all of this brown cards, uh, craft paper. So I just wanted to let you guys see that it does fold up. All of the elements that I have in there will fit. Okay, and you want to make sure that you do your box and your lid either out of a craft board, out of poster board, or some heavy, heavy cardstock, watercolor paper, something that's heavy because it's going to get a lot of use and you want it to be sturdy, you want it to be hold up. You don't want to give them some flimsy cardstock, which you can use this on the elements inside, the lighter stuff. But, and I recommend that you use some of the lighter stuff so it won't be so heavy because I can guarantee you this box probably weighs about eight ounces. This is my pretty version. And I do love the brown craft and that's why I chose it to go with the butterfly ribbons and stuff like that. This is the gardenia we made a couple of weeks ago in the live. And I put it on the top of the box. So that's the way that it's going to look. Let me move this out of the way so that you guys can see this when it opens. And just in case anybody's at, go let's just cover this first and get it out of the way. This is the, uh, what I use for the lid and the base of my box right here. The craft board from Cricut. Love this stuff. It works great for this project. Grab some while it's on sale, guys. This is the paper that I used. This is Craftsmith. It's a thin pattern paper, only patterned on one side. And it, this box is going to look like a lot, guys, when you look in it. But a lot of the papers and stuff, you only are using little pieces out of it. So you've got tons of paper left. Uh, everything that I did other than the lid um, and I think one little piece of because I was running late, I just tore a piece off of this and cut it and stuck it where I needed because I forgot to put a panel in there. 
Um, but not everybody's going to need a panel because they may not use that element. So, but everything that is in that box came out of this hot buy from Michaels. And I got this for, I think, six, six bucks, five bucks, six bucks. So that is going to be all, all that you need is a, a stack. Uh, I think they're, if you split it up and do different colors and different patterns, I think I had 23 mats, but I mean, I could have probably, if I did it all in one color, I could have probably cut it all out of eight or 10 sheets of paper. And that includes the base and the base takes five sheets. So let's go ahead and show you guys what's in it. Take the lid off. And if you're going to put ribbon on it like I did, you're going to have to cut some panels to hide your, where your ribbon ends. It just looks nicer. Okay. And I didn't trim that up well. Like I said, I was rushed. So you guys don't pay attention to my boo-boos. I'll even show you. I dropped an ink pad on it when I was putting it. I was putting closing it. And I didn't realize my ink pad wasn't closed and I dropped it on the ink pad. But, oh well. Live and learn. If you're going to use ribbon on the base, you want to put it on before you do anything else. So, once you've cut it and you have your base piece like this, you're going to want to run that ribbon on both sides, run it around on the front, and tack it down. Okay? So... And then you can cover the inside after that. Where to start? There, this thing is packed, guys. First, we have a little box, and I have some little Velcro tabs to hold that down um, in place. But it's a little heart box. You can open that up. You can put anything in there. I put a little piece of candy in mine. Okay, that's right in the center. And then we have the yin yang heart, and you can put a stamp, sentiment a photo, whatever you want to put in there, okay? And it closes itself. On this side, we have a pinwheel. And I had a little butterfly brad. I don't know if you guys can see that. That matched the butterfly on there. So I used that and did a little pinwheel there. Let me flip this around so you guys can see it. I hope this is in the right direction. Then when you open it up, and you're going to need something here. Uh, you can, I just did this for time purposes. I just stuck a piece that was left over from something else to hide my brad. Uh, but in the real world, I would cut a panel to go there. In this file that you guys are going to get, you're going to have to make some of your own panels. And that I intentionally did that so that you guys could learn how to use Design Space and make those. And you're just going to use your base as a template and put in their squares. If you type in, go to images and type in square there and click free, there's a tan colored square in there with rounded corners. So you don't have to use a square square and wonder how to do that. And if you'll look in your free images, um, you'll find those, even the rectangles. So, and then you have here a little envelope and I tie it shut with a ribbon. And you can put a photo, a stamp, you can stamp a sentiment, anything you want in that section. I'm not going to take time to tie that back up. You'll also want to stamp or embellish here. This is a card front right here. And I didn't have time. I ran out of time. But I was going to put um, thank you or something to that effect in here for this sentiment. And then when you open it up, you have the pop-up things. See if you guys can see that. So right here you have a pop-up in there. And you can change this out. There are several pop-up cards in Design Space. It doesn't have to say thanks. You can put anything you want. You can put anything you want in these four corners. I did include the butterflies if you guys wanted to use that. Then another boo-boo I made. I put this on upside down. When you do, guys do this little candy box, which we did a couple of weeks ago as well, we, I taught you guys how to make this box. Um, Make sure you put the top at the bottom of the card so that when it's closed up, your candy doesn't fall out. But I just tied that up. And then when you, and it's easier if you put it up here too. And I noticed it just minutes before I got ready. 
there's supposed to be a ribbon, something tied on each four sides, and I noticed my ribbon was gone. That's how I know I put it in upside down. But then you've just got your candy in there, and you just pull it out. Okay? So there's that box on the top of this panel from the center. Then when you open it up, there's a hello pop-up. Like I said, put any of the pop-ups that you want in here, any elements. You may have cards or that do things that you would want to put in here. And don't worry, I do have room for photos. And then here is just, I just put a panel here. I just cut a panel just to show you guys you can cut a panel and put on these. You can embellish, stamp, whatever. And then I messed up my stamp here, but that's okay. And then when you open it up, we have the twist and pop card. And these are all miniatures of the, the big things, guys, of the big cards. Okay? So that's what's on that side. And then when you turn it around here, we have the shutter card. And I didn't have time to put a photo or stamp it, but you just stamp here, and it reveals it when you open. So you have a shutter card. And then you have the waterfall. And as you pull it, it flips the photos. I did not have time. They are in your file. Um, this is just the panel. Your photo goes on top of your decorative panels here, and then you'll also put photos on the back side. Okay? Hi, Tina. So you'll have that waterfall effect. Right, let me turn it up so you guys can see what's happening there. And it just, when you pull it, they just rotate. So I think this holds seven photos. So that's on that side of it. And then when you open it up here, here's a place for you to stamp a sentiment. And then there's a little hidden pocket right here on this panel. And you can, like I said, you guys can put whatever you want. You can move things around however you want to do them. But this box is packed full of little surprises. And then you have... Let's see, it goes this way, so that you're pulling this way, and then you open it, and you have this little hidden pocket, whatever you want. On, you can make this your card front um, for this next card, and here we have the little butterflies, floating butterflies. Okay, thanks Jamie, but you have that element in this card as well. And then on this side, we have a shaker card. I don't know if you, the camera's going to pick that up, but this is a shaker element. This paper I picked was a little bit dark. If I did it again, I would probably go lighter here so that you could see the shaker elements a little bit better. So keep that in mind, or either put a white panel instead of a pattern panel like I did behind it. Okay? So that's that one. And then... When you open this up, you have a little pop-up gift card. So there's a place to put a gift card in here. And you can put photos on each side, sentiments, whatever you want to put there. And then when you open that up, this is going to be a card front for your next card and whatever you want to put here on this little surprise element. And we have the color change card. Hi, Brenda. And it changes color when you pull it out. So you go from the black and white. And for this element, guys, you are going to need stays on ink. You have to have stays on for this element, or you'll have to swap it out with something else. Okay? Because it's stamped on that transparency. And that was all that I could put in this box, guys. I couldn't figure out anything else to add to it. So if you guys can think of some more stuff to, to pack in there, go for it. Um, I should have tied that back up, but I don't have a lot of time to go over everything and do that. And your lid is going to fit pretty snug, and you want it to fit snug. 
but there is room to put all of that in there and put the ribbon on the lid and put the liners. I used a uh, craft board and then I used a, the brown craft paper to line the back of that ribbon. And I was afraid the lid wouldn't fit, but it does. It holds it nice and snug. Okay. So all of these cards that we've done over the last year are in this box. So are you guys liking that? You want me to change something? Let me bring this over. And you're also, to do that color change card, not only are you going to need stays on, you are going to need a stamping platform of some sort, this or a Misty. You could probably get away without it, but you're going to have to stamp very precisely. If you don't have a stamping platform and you're going to use a block to do that color change card, I am going to suggest that you tape your transparency down and cut it by hand after you've stamped it so that you can line it up on top of the other. That's the only other way around it. That's the only other way I know to do it is to use like a double-sided tape and lay it, overlay it onto the stamped piece that you color and then cut your transparency by hand after you've stamped it. But you have to have stays on ink or it won't stay on the transparency. It will smear. Okay? So just a couple of things there that you're going to have to have for some of the elements, and we'll go over those. So if you guys need to take notes and you want to get a piece of paper, you know, grab that so that you'll, you'll have it. I hope everybody likes it because I have worked on this for pretty much a month. <laughs> so, and I just cut it and finished it today. Let's switch over to Design Space. And we'll go over the elements of the card while I get my papers together. Okay. Right here, in case anybody's wondering, can everybody see this? Do I need to make this smaller maybe? There we go. Now everybody can see just about everything. If you are a Patreon, you have everything that's in the box in the file. If you are not a Patreon member, you have another file, and some of the elements will be missing, uh, but you can go and you can make these elements, or you can uh, subscribe to me on Patreon and um, get these elements. This right here is the card that flips up, and I'm going to show you guys as we go along um, if anybody doesn't remember, okay? Hey, Carol. So, remember the gift card holder where I pulled the iTunes card out? This is that element. You're going to cut this. I cut it out of two different colors of paper. You're just going to glue around the edges of this, leaving this top open. So, just down this edge and across the bottom at the score line and then you're going to glue them together with the notches matching up. Don't put anything on the bottoms. That's what glues to your card bases. These are the butterflies that are in the corners of the box. Here's the yin yang heart. Here's the candy box that's in the middle. This is the floating butterflies. This right here is these you actually only need seven. I don't know why I did eight. Maybe you need one an extra one for something else. But this is your waterfall element. And again, guys, you can cut these. I've put them in. If it's white, if I put the color as white in here, it needs to remain white. Um, this is your transparency color right here. And then the photos I left as a transparency color so you would know those are photos. So you'll need to upload photos or cut photos in that shape or something of that nature. But everything else, anything, any other color can be changed except white. If it's white on this thing, it needs to be cut as white except that little ring right there. 
I don't know if you guys can see that. This is the color change card. That little ring, you can cut that out of a pattern paper if you want, but everything else needs to be cut in white that is white on this card. Well, I take that back. This base. I should have changed that. I'm sorry, guys. I did not change this. Um, this is the twist card. The twist pop-up. You can cut that base out of anything there. It's really just imperative on this card right here. This color change, that piece has got to be white. Those two, those pieces right there. I didn't mean to confuse you. I thought I had changed this, but I think I labeled that one Stamper Embellish. This one has to stay for stamping. I did label it. That's what I did. I apologize. I did go back and change it because I thought that was confusing. And I put right here, smooth, light color for stamping. So everything else can be changed. This is the only one. This right here is your shaker card. This right here is your shutter card. This is the pop-up. Some of these elements are right out of access. These two just pop-ups out of access. Um, I think this is out of many books. This is the little hidden folder for a note, whatever you want to stick in there, or a photograph. Here's your twist and pop. Here's the candy box. And then this is the ribbon closed envelope with the rounded edges. And here is your pinwheel. I think that covers most of it. Has anybody got any questions about cutting it? These two hearts need to be cut in different colors on this yin yang. I will you because you won't be able to tell what they are closed. Let me show you. If you don't cut those out of different colors, because they you are going to cut this panel, and then the hearts need to be different colors so that you can change them. Does anybody have any questions about any of the elements that you need to cut for Friday? Joanne, I have a file to provide you guys. Um, there's a file for patrons and there's a file for everybody else. Most all of the elements, there's all but a few. So a few of them are for patrons only. And then all of the rest of the elements I did share publicly. So I'll get you that file. We tried last Friday to post files in uh, YouTube chat, and it doesn't allow it. It it just destroys the links. So it's, it just doesn't work. But we'll get it to you. Um, if you come to the groups and just ask us, we'll post that file for you. Hey, Claudia. Thank you. All right, let's look at how the base goes together. That's what we're going to put together today. And I cut it out of different colors of paper so you guys could see. But this is the main base that you're going to cut. You can use the craft paper, but like I said, the craft board works so much better. Or poster board, something heavy. Oh, thanks, Joanne. I appreciate it. I appreciate all the patron, uh, Patreon supporters. Thank you. Hey, Lovata. We'll go over the box again before um, we leave tonight so that everybody who uh, joined late can see everything, all the elements that are in this box. Because it is a wow. It's, a, it, it's packed full of stuff. So once you have this marked, and you'll see your score lines on there, the first thing you want to do is... Fold across. Make sure you use a bone folder. You want this to flip back open. You you want it. You want to kind of weaken the paper just a little bit. So you want to fold it a couple of times. Use your bone folders. I'm not going to go through that here, but you guys you know how to to do your folds. So you've done both sides there, and then you're going to turn it around and do the same thing on the other side. And I think I just missed my 
thought I missed my score line. And the same thing, flip it over and to give it some play. And I, I'm trying to, this craft board is hard to fold. Not the craft board, the craft paper. It's, got, it's more fibrous than the craft board. This cuts better than this does. This is just the El Cheapo packs from Hobby Lobby for 50% uh, off the $4.99. But once you have all four sides folded and it's floppy, I found that it was easier for me to, even though these go to the inside, to pull them up and fold them on the outside with the bone folder because you're going to fold it both ways anyway. So I just folded all of my corners just like that. You're just going to kind of make a corner with these. They're not really hearts, but they are hearts. This was this base is the explosion base modified out of mini books cartridge. I just modified it, uh, the corner, because I wanted a place to put elements and to keep this box closed and keep the little box in the middle in place. But you're going to do the same thing with all the corners. You're just going to fold them both ways. And I also wanted it to be where you could do it for Valentine's Day and use these for hearts, uh, for spring, for butterflies. Uh, you could do a summer party and make these ice cream cones. Uh, just it's all sorts of themes. Um, four leaf clovers for St. Patrick's Day or three leaf will go in here. You don't have, even though it looks like a heart folded, you don't have to put a heart. This this shape will go for many different things. You can put circles in here, everything. I make eyeglasses, tons of stuff. So once you've done that, then your box should pretty much fold easily by pushing in the four corners, like so. And that is the center base. Let's pull this up. That's where I put the butterflies here. Okay. Same thing. So once you've done that, I left my chocolate out of there. Put that back in there before I lose it. Then you're going to take the lid. And it just has four tabs here, two on each side. And you're just going to fold those in. And then you're going to fold the four sides down if you're folding away from you. If you're folding up, you can flip it over and fold it up, whichever you prefer. And then you're just going to put glue on those tabs and glue them into place, giving you the box like so. Okay. Again, if you put ribbon on your box like I did, cut four strips. Uh, I think they're, I forgot what I cut them. I cut them at one inch by, I think it was three, seven, five, but they're the same color, so they don't really show. And cover the lid. You, they're just shy of four inches was what I cut it. Just shy of four inches. So that's what you'll need to do with your lids. Is everybody still with me on the, the top and the base? And then you have these three pieces and they are just slightly smaller than the next not much at all but you're going to fold all four flaps 
again in both directions. You want that floppy wow factor, but you don't want it to be too floppy. So I used to, I used, like I said, that Michael's paper stack, and it's working fine for mine. You're going to do that with all four of these. It will not, Alice, it will not make a difference. Um, uh, in these, it, it should not make a difference. It's just going to make it a little sturdier. I cut these all out of craft, and it worked just fine. It, it's going to give it a little bit more weight, um, but you'll still be able to get your lid and everything on it. I cut mine out of decorative paper for the pretty one. It's, it's whatever you want to do. You can always save those pieces for something else later. Make shaker cards out of the, you know, cut them off and make shaker cards. Or if you decide that you want to change it up. But you should be fine. I, I don't see where it might be a problem. I did not cut these out of craft board and test it. If that's what you're asking, I, I did not do that. I don't think I folded this one the other way. I may have while I was talking. Okay, so once you've folded those, you're just going to glue this square only. Okay? Do not glue any of your flaps unless you want to use those for a base and you're not going to use as many elements. Okay? So, you may want to cut two of this largest one and do that. Um, because I did see a couple of places, like right here, I just cut a panel because this wasn't dark enough. For, this was too dark and it wasn't showing up for me. The very much wasn't. So I just sliced off a piece and stuck it under there. But in the real world, I would have cut this and made it fit with the card a little bit better. But if you want to cut two of your largest ones, that will have you covered on all four corners, especially if you're doing your ribbons. That's going to help you put the ribbons down and everything as well. So that is my suggestion If you is to cut two of these, one out of pretty paper, and glue it completely down. Or if you want to do it just like I did, then only glue the center, okay? Once you have that one in, the, it's very important that you do not glue the four sides of these. You just want to glue in the center. And then again, glue this one into the center, okay? Then you're going to do your yin yang heart and you want to glue your hearts on each side you're going to glue this piece down to that base here okay and then this box your little chocolate box that's in there is what's going to sit on top of that when it's closed so you'll want to cut your papers coordinating papers as these three are going to be touching. So that's for that one. Okay, so that is the explosion box. I'll go over this one more time uh, for those that were a little bit late. Lovato, make sure that when you put your little chocolate box on this panel that you glue the top, the piece with the holes, towards the bottom of the flap, not to the center. Then you have your pop-ups, and then you have your twist and pop. Okay, over here you have your pinwheel, you have your rounded envelope that's tied with a ribbon, your card front, and your pop-up thanks. Then you have your shaker card on this side, and then your pop-up gift card, then your card front, and your color change card.
Then on this side you have your shutter card and it's going to open up and you're going to have a stamp in the middle. Like I said, I ran out of time. I didn't have time to stamp mine so I just put it together. Then you'll have your waterfall card. Your hidden envelope for your note or photos. This is your card front for the floppy butterflies. And the strips, I didn't cut these two down and I should have. I cut this one down. You just need to trim them a little. I did leave them long so that you could adjust them for whatever element you used on the end. I used butterflies on this one, but you can use circles or squares, photos, anything you want to use. Then you have, oh, I did that side. I did that side. Then you have your pinwheel side. Did I cover that? I did. So that's all of it. That's everything that's in the box. So you guys pick out your papers. Um, pick out your embellishments, that sort of thing. And a couple of extra panels. And we're going to go over... Um, well, not go over Friday. Friday, we are going to assemble one of these boxes and all of the elements. So I will cut another pretty one since I made a couple of boo-boos on that one. I will cut another one and we will put all of the elements together on Friday as a Friday's project. Does anybody have any questions? And this is what the file looks like. Yeah, Alice, it might be better just to cut them out of lighter paper and, and um, a pattern paper because that's going to give you that little bit of wow in there as you're flipping through the, the edges and the borders. That's where all of that is coming from. So if you cut it out of craft board, you may not get all of those elements. Because I think I'm going to cut a second one for mine, like this, the twist and pop. I would have liked to have had a little bit of a border around the back of that. And then you can use like your craft board and stuff if you want. You can use it for like your shaker bases and put a little piece of pattern paper over it and then you can use it. You can find things to use it. Use punches. Use it for elements in there because you've got the brown paper in here anyway, the craft board. And the craft board does come in white, guys, if you want to do this in white. It comes in the brown, white, and black. So... You do have options, and then you have poster board that's in so many other colors. Okay. Any design space questions or project issues that anybody's having? Okay, Neela. Um, $1 and $2 on the um, Patreon get you the regular Patreon files, and $5 or more get you the Patreon files and the exclusive Patreon files. There are some exclusive just to um, $5 and more. So there's two sets of files. The $5 gets you everything. Okay, next we had questions about heat embossing and how to do it. And if you guys have design space questions or whatever, just shout them out. We'll switch back over and answer those for you. Okay, I just grabbed a couple of colors, guys. 
because I haven't embossed in forever. And like I said, uh, for you guys that were late, if you are going to do the color change card, you're going to need some stays on ink. Okay? You need that to stamp on transparency. For heat embossing, you're going to need some Versamark ink. This is just a clear ink that will not dry very fast so that you can put your powder on before it dries. Okay? Because if it, the ink isn't wet, the powder won't stick to it. If the powder doesn't stick to it, then you're just going to blow it off with the embosser, the heat embosser. So, yes, Neela, you can, anytime. I get these also, and if you're not doing a ton of writing, guys, you can use these in your Cricut. These are the embossed pens, the Ranger embossed pens. They sell them at Michael's. Uh, I'm sure they have them at Blitzy, Scrapbook.com, Amazon, all of these places. So, this will allow you to write with them, and then you can pop out that uh, mat as soon as it comes out, and they stay wet long enough for you to emboss. Now, you can't write a book, but you can write, you know, something like thank you or happy birthday, things like that, and it will stay wet long enough for the Cricut to write that cut that panel and as long as you don't have a bunch of intricate cutting on it and then you can emboss it. Now if it does have a lot of intricate cutting, what I did once because I really wanted to emboss on something that was intricate and it was taking a while to cut is I didn't eject my mat and I just hit go again and let it write right back over it then stopped it and popped, at, popped it out because it was already cut. And so it just wrote on there twice, and that kept it wet long enough for me to emboss. So that's a way around that. But the, the main way that people emboss are with the Versa Mark Ink and your stamps. And I'm just using a block today just because I need space. And the stamping platform takes up space. So the first thing you want to do is get your cardstock, and then you'll need an embossing bag. Um, these are for static, and you're just going to dust over the card. And that's so that you don't have a lot of embossing powder stuck where you don't want it. Okay? And then I use coffee filters. You can use these trays. I just find that these are harder to use. A lot of people like them but you can dump your embossing powder back in here so that you can put it back in the jar. It's whatever you prefer. That's user preference, but I have one. Um, I prefer to use this with beads and sequins and stuff. So, But Michaels has them. They have them on Blitzy. They have them everywhere. So once you've uh, dusted it with your embossing bag, and it, I don't know if you guys can see it, but see that? it has this powder in there. And that's to keep the static down. So you're just going to dust it. Then you're going to take your stamp and you're going to ink it up with the Versamark. Hey, Wanda. And then you're just going to stamp your image. It's sticky. And then you're going to take your embossing powder and then you're just going to dump it on there. Give it just a little tap. You don't want to tap it too hard. And I like to coat mine twice. It's totally up to you. If you have any places that aren't sticking. And I also have... I got this at Hobby Lobby. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's a really, really teeny tiny, but it's stiff. And then you can go in anywhere that you have embossing powder stick that you don't want it and clean up areas. Oops. Didn't want to clean that up that much. 
but you can clean those up with a small brush when it's sticking in areas where you don't want it. Okay, then I'm just going to set that to the side. I'm going to dump my powder back into my container. And you'll want to close that up because you don't want to blow embossing powder everywhere. And then you're going to need a heat tool in embossing. I got this one at Michael's. I don't know. Maybe it was Hobby Lobby. Yeah, Hobby Lobby. It's Paper Studio. I gave eight or ten bucks for it. Um, but you're going to need an embossing gun. A, some people say they use a hair dryer. I don't know how they do that because it will blow the embossing powder off the card if it's too strong. Okay? But you're just going to turn it on. I like to turn it on low and just let it heat up a little bit before I start on my embossing. And then you can turn it up to high if you want. And I like to heat from the back first, just a little bit, and then come to the front. And you're just going to heat until you melt that embossing powder and it gets a good shine on it. And you'll see all the grainy stuff. It won't it won't be grainy. It'll melt. Because you're basically it's like a sand. You're melting into a um plastic. And I didn't clean that up really well. You can see I still got some pieces in there. Um, but it's too late now. So and we're going to do another one just to show you guys. But you'll want to let it cool before you touch it because it is melted and it will stick to you. Okay? Just set it down to cool, Bonnie. There's nothing to be nervous about. Just set it down. It's already cool. I mean, it, it cools that quickly. But again, all you're going to do is just ink up your stamp. There's probably enough on there. They, they stay wet a good long time. I am going to see if I can't get a cleaner stamp on this. Which I have to move off camera to do because I've got stuff on that mat. And then you can see that's just clear ink, embossing ink. I used it. I used my embossing buddy. I used him. We're going to do this one. This one I think is copper. I like the way that these, the metallics emboss. I've got, you see, the static didn't help me there. I'm just going to brush that off. Try to clean it up a little bit. But that's all you do. But this... If you're going to do a lot of embossing, is your best friend. This is a 12 slash zero. I don't know, something touch. It's called the angular brush. I don't know if it'll focus on that, but it's an angular. And it really helps because you have that angle where you can hold it like a, a pencil and clean up your image. And make sure you hold this on the corner, guys, when you're doing this. Or you get a clothespin or something to hold this with because it can get hot and you don't want to burn yourself. And then you're just going to heat this until it begins changing color and gets shiny.
You don't want to overheat either. If you overheat and it begins bubbling, it won't be smooth. But it's just that quick. And if you're using a thin paper like this, it will curl. If you're going to do it on acetate, they make a heat resistant acetate for it. But that's how you heat emboss. As some of you were asking. And this is like, um, I don't know if you've ever gotten wedding invitations or graduation invitations where it felt like it had like raised ink or plastic, but that's what this is. This is what it does. The stamp, Claudia. Uh, this is a... This is just one of those little cheapy $2.99, I think, stamps from, I don't know, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Joann's, Tuesday Morning. I think it's a stamp abilities. Honestly, I don't know. Um, but it says, be strong, go with your heart, and believe in miracles because anything can happen. Yeah, that, and that's why I, I grabbed it, because I like what it said. But you can see what the difference on them if you clean them up and you don't clean them up. You see how that, I mean, it's a hard plastic. You're not going to get that off. If you don't clean it up before you melt it, it's too late. You have to make sure you get a good stamp and that you clean up all of your little areas because your embossing buddy will help because the whole card would be like that if you don't use it but you need something to help clean that up with or I do anyway I've seen people that use the embossing buddy and they don't have anything stick except it doesn't work for me like that <laughs> Yeah, I love the look of this. I really love this copper on this teal. And I'll tell you guys, this on craft board, that copper on the craft board is really pretty. It comes out really pretty. A little cream color and some lace. Does anybody have any other questions? Did you want to go over the anything on the explosion box again? Okay, guys. Don't for I want to say thank you to Jamie, Sue, Tina, um, and Catherine. You guys are much appreciated. Uh, thank you for your help. I'll, I'll try that, Lovata. I think I've tried it both ways, and I still end up having places to clean up. It's probably my stamping. I found the brush over in where the acrylic and oil paints and stuff like that are. over in the paints um, where the canvases and acrylics and oil painting and all that all of your artist brushes that's where this is at it's an artist brush it's the only place that I could find one that was just had a little bit of hair on it not much because you don't want anything that's going to fan out and things like that to clean up your embossing. It's a 12-0 is all I know. 12-0 angular. Mm-hmm. 
I'm just reading some everybody's comments to make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, don't forget Friday we are going to put together all of the inside elements to our box. Iron on, iron on light, and HTV. Uh, Wanda, HTV is heat transfer vinyl. Iron on is heat transfer vinyl. Um, I don't know why they, I guess it was just easier to type HTV, so they all started calling HTV, but it's all the same. Iron on light um, is going to have a lower melting point, say, than like brick. Uh, light is like all of your regular iron on and then you have a brick that's really heavy really thick then you have um, your foils and your holographic and things like that um, that have lower melting points than some of the thicker things like flock and all of that and glitter but as far as iron on and HTV it's it's all the same stuff Yes, Neela, there, there is, and it might work for some people, um, but this was my tool of choice. So just take a look in the artist department and, and see what might be your best friend, you know? So some people can work better with uh, something that's got more bristle that's stiffer, but I couldn't. I tried several different things. This was the only thing that I found that worked for me because we all... Our hands are shaped different. We all hold our tools differently. Um, so what works for me, may not, if somebody holds their tool like this rather than me like this, it's not going to work as well for them. So the way you hold your tools also matter as to what will work for you and what won't. Yeah, see, Jamie uses an eyeliner brush that works for her. To me, the hairs were just too long on those for it to work for me. <laughs> it may have just been the eyeliner brush that I that I had. But I think I got this. I think it was like three, maybe four bucks. I got it when they had them on a 50% off sale. I know that because I don't buy these kind of things from the stores unless they're on sale or I get to use 40% off at least. Is everybody doing good with design space? Nobody has any questions on that? Yeah, try it, Neela. I, I would try it. I always try what you have before you buy something. That's what I did. I, I tried everything I had and that didn't work, so I went and bought that and it worked for me. Okay, Friday we are going to put the box together, the explosion box, all of the elements inside the explosion box. We went over the base, so you guys put your base together before Friday because that part we're not going to cover again. We're just going to be doing the elements um, to, just to save time because it takes a couple of hours. Well, if you've got everything cut out and ready, we can probably put it together in an hour. Uh, but I know people are going to have questions and, and we'll have some stops and starts. So, as always, Project Fridays are, are usually an hour and a half to two hours long. So, that being said, make sure you cut everything. You should have already cut this part. Get it put together. Get it ready. Put your ribbon on it if you want it. And then cut all of your elements out of your pattern paper and your pretty stuff and get it ready. Oh, thank you, Claudia. I appreciate it. Um, thanks to all the Patreon supporters. I really appreciate you guys. It helps me cover the cost of all these papers and things like that. The hearts, are they cut as one? No, Neela. Right here, this one. Let me ungroup it. 
you'll want one heart one color, the other heart another color, and then your base out of a pattern. Your pattern is going to be to the inside, and then you're going to glue this heart on the back side there, which you'll flip it over, of course, and then you're going to glue this one on the back side here so that when you fold them in, you have this. So it's cut like this, and then you put one color on one side and one on the other. So that when they close, you have that yin yang look. And you don't have to use these guys. I'm going to show you how to put all of these things together your twist and pop, your shutters, um, the color change, all of those elements. Some of these are just are very easy, self explanatory. Um, so that's what we're going to go over is just the difficult elements. Um, so if you want to start putting it together, if you want to change out some of the elements, change them out. Get Do what you want to do in your explosion box. Hey, Dorothy. So make sure that you have your base ready and your top and your ribbons on it if you're going to use your ribbons. And because the, these are things that you can do ahead of time because we're just going to want to put the elements together and stick them in the box. But feel free to change out anything that you want to change, and then when we're putting that part together, you can work on your element that you changed out. Yeah, Friday we're going to put all of these in there. And, and make this box. Yeah, better late than never, Dorothy. Um, and again, Friday is winter, winter chicken dinner, so if everybody paid attention, um, we'll either ask something about the Facebook groups or um, the explosion box, a design space question. You never know. I just might ask you know, what time it is. You never know. And what am I going to do? I don't know. I don't even know what I'm going to give away this week. I've been working on a couple of projects. What do you guys think about these? I'm not finished with this one. I still have to, I still have a couple of missed spots with the clear cast. Have some, and I have to put my, I am going to actually try to put party foil on this and seal it in. So this is a test. This is just a test mug. Kind of looks like it's dripping down. And in case anybody's wondering about last week's project where I showed you how to do the wood grain, I told everybody that I would cover it. Don't bake it. I know I told you guys to bake it, but that's what I was told and all the research I did. When I baked it, it turned yellow again, a, a greenish yellow, like the first one did. See the difference in the color? So I took the ink off and I re-inked it and I didn't bake it. And I just took a hair dryer and, and dried it off and um, or dried it with the hair dryer, not dried it off, but I dried it with a hair dryer. I cut my Cricut adhesive foil in the copper color and or rose gold and I applied it and then I applied the clear cast to it and it smoothed it and sealed it in there and it did not change color and it did not smear. 
I have one little place right there, and this is my fault. But I'm going to fix this. I'm going to I'm going to clip it and then I'm going to glue it down and seal it and put some more clear coat on it. But I dropped my vinyl when I were, was putting it on and I had to peel that portion up and it stretched it. That piece is sealed in. I, I don't know if I'll get that out, but this piece is still hanging out. So I'm going to get that off and not bad for my first one. Uh, Lovata, I got it at Hobby Lobby. Michaels does not carry it. It's um, $20.99, but if you use your 40% off coupon, then it's not that bad. But you use, let me grab it. This cup right here, I mixed, I don't know what one DSSP is, but dispenser cup, I don't know. Anyway, I, I mixed it just below one tablespoon right here. And I coated this cup with it. I've done two cups, and I, I mean, I've used the same amount on I used a little bit more I took this to one tablespoon for this bigger cup so for the smaller cup you don't even need a tablespoon of it and that's out of each bottle but it's the amazing amazing clear cast and you'll want the FDA compliant one in the purple box Hey, Shaz. Dessert spoon. Thank you. I knew it was something. I've heard it before, but I couldn't remember what it was. Hey, Debbie. This is one coat. This was, this was the dessert spoon. It is all it took for this size All right. I'm glad you made it, Shaz. Yes, that is adhesive foil I put on that cup. It is. And um, I don't know where I don't know where my other cup is. I have Lovata, I have one of these cups that I took just like this. The Ozark Trails. And I cleaned it with alcohol, and I stuck the stainless adhesive foil to it. And that was last year, right about this time last year. I wash it three or four times a week in the dishwasher, top and bottom rack, high heat, wash and dry. It's not sealed with anything. And the finish, the copper color finish is coming off the cup because these the cups are not dishwasher safe. They say not to wash them in the dishwasher. Um, the finish is coming off the cup, but my Cricut adhesive foil isn't budging. The join, this is, um, the adhesive vinyl. And all I did was I cut an extra flower because there was a space, I wasn't sure where it was going to meet up, and I slapped the flower over the other end. This is where the two ends met. So that's all I did. I just cut another flower. I put one on the bottom too. But yeah, I don't ever, because you never know how you're going to lay it down. No, this background was not here. I did the background. I showed that last Friday, Shaz. Um, the first thing you want to do is paint your cup with a cream color or tan base. Let it dry. It doesn't, it cannot be tacky at all. It has to be dry. 
and then you'll use the alcohol inks and just brush them out with a, I call it just a chip brush. That's what they call them at the hardware store, chip brush. And just drag the ink out. And then you're just going to go over and then drop the ink to make your knots in different places. Yeah, I, I did. I did the whole cup. And like I said, and, and Chaz, on that video I say to bake it. Do not bake it. When you bake it, it turns an ugly yellow color greenish yellow so you don't want to do that don't bake it dry it with a hair dryer put your vinyl on there is you want to let it dry overnight it, if it's sticky after you've got your ink on it's not dry let it dry put your vinyl on and then put your clear cast yes i do have the rotisserie so it spins while it's dry You probably, you just applied it too heavy, Debbie. Um, I have one on this cup. Um, but I'm just going to, right here, I'm just going to take some sandpaper and I'm going to sand it down smooth. And then I am going to, my husband has a buffer, I'm going to buff it. And then I'm going to put another coat on. I think it'll be fine. Just don't want to sand it down to your glitter finish or whatever finish you have on it. But I have, this one took longer to dry, but the temperature matters. It's not, it feels like I've, it's got rough spots in it, but that's the glitter itself. And so another coat will smooth that out. So even if you've got that, a place on it, you can probably put another coat and it might work itself out. Bonnie, the rotisserie I had, well, I say I had. I ordered another one for 20 bucks because I couldn't find the one my husband hid from me. I'm, I got tired of moving it around for a year, and then um, when I wanted it, I couldn't find it. So I ordered one for 20 bucks. I still had all the other rotisserie parts, and my husband cut a block of wood or two and mounted it for me so that I could put my cups on it. If you look up uh, cup tisserie on YouTube, there are several tutorials on how you can make them. Okay, so that covers all of those projects. Does anybody have any other project questions or design space questions? I forgot to put my chocolate back in the box. And I really wanted to cut this out of acetate and forgot. So I'm going to recut that. You made your own eight cups at a time? Yeah, I've seen those. I don't do that many. I'm, I'm just doing these for personal and, and just trying to get some experience in doing them so I can help people and answer their questions about them. And this is what the file looks like if you're a Patreon member. And it's just going to slightly vary. You're not going to have all the elements if you're not a Patreon supporter. But I'll, I'll leave this file in the description as soon as uh, uh, YouTube uh, puts it up, up available.
Okay, guys, that's it for tonight. Remember, 7.30, Friday, winner, winner, chicken dinner, and we're going to put together an explosion box. Get your base, have your bases ready, have all of your elements cut, and we will we'll go through how to put together the color change, the shutter, the twist and pop, um, all of the uh, ones that are not self-explanatory, the boxes, things like that. We'll go through and put those together uh, so that everybody knows how to do those when they make these boxes. <laughs> that explosion. Yeah, that's uh, my screensaver. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, she just kind of styled it. I just haven't. That's been one of those days. I'm a little disheveled today. You guys, thank you. Thank you all for supporting me on Patreon and in the groups. Don't forget to use the links and check out that huge flash sale going on at Cricut. You guys, I'll see you over in the Facebook group. Y'all have a good night. Bye-bye.